Hello, brothers and sisters. Hello, subscribers. This is part two of the video titled Same Fate for U.S. as Sodom. In chapter 51 of the book of Jeremiah, we read about the judgments that await current day Babylon. And of course, I will be attaching links in the description box below and also in the comments section later on. We shall also be referring to parallel verses, mostly from the book of Revelation, that are uncannily, well, I shouldn't say uncannily, that they are similar. Let's start with our reading of this chapter. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her, and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that bend it, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted himself up in his brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are trust true in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. This verse is telling you specifically, get out of her. Do not get caught up in the crossfire. You understand? And down the, as we read into the chapter, there is another warning to flee out from Babylon. Let's go now, therefore, to the parallel verse, which would obviously would be Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, where it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. So if you have the means, leave, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Deliver every man his soul. Save your soul and your family's soul. If it is possible, if you have the means to leave. Babylon, verse 7, had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And we also have a two parallel verses, actually, um, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication, and Revelation chapter 18, verse 3, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the rot of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Verse 8 in Jeremiah 51, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so, she may be healed. And the parallel verse would be in Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage, for every unclean and hated bird verse 9 in jeremiah 51 we would have healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies 
And the parallel verse again would be in Revelation chapter 18, verse 5. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Verse 10 in Jeremiah 51. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes for the Lord. Hate both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. And the parallel verse in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, reads, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowels came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Verse 14 of Jeremiah, chapter 51, the Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe, and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, as we very well know as we read in the Old Testament, where kingdoms have been destroyed through, uh, through Israel, which is why we read in verse 20, Thou art my battle axe, and weapons of war, as God is referring to Israel. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all the evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. So possibly the burnt mountain is referring to Yellowstone. If Yellowstone had to erupt, it would certainly turn into a burnt mountain, spewing ash, toxic gases, and lava. And it would render at least, at least, two-thirds of the U.S. uninhabitable. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord the land would be rendered useless. Set up, set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the king, kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Askenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars, prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. 
and the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight, they have remained in their holes. Their might has failed, they became as women, they have burned her dwelling places, her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. The military, the U.S. military. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hate devoured me, he hate crushed me, he hate made me an empty vessel, he hate swallowed me up like a dragon, he hate filled his belly with my delegates, he hate cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, shall Jerusalem say. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause, and take, thy, take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea, and make her springs dry, and Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons and astonishment and then hissing without an inhabitant. And the parallel verse would be in Revelation chapter 18, verse 2b, where we read, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for, ev of for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. They shall roar together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams, with he goats. How is Shishak taken, and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. So that is the second reference there in verse 42, that the sea shall engulf Babylon, at least parts of it. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any man of son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Baal in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. That is your second verse there, where the Lord is telling you to go out of the midst of her. Second verse in Jeremiah 51, and of course the parallel for this verse would be the one that we just read in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, Come out of her, my people, that ye partake not of her plagues. Verse 46, And lest your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth shall, and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoilers shall come up unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon had caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach. Shame, he covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. 
Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. And this I interpret per my, myself as where it says, though Babylon should mount up to heaven, that Babylon is mounting a defensive response. What, um, what is called space force, the space force which uh, the 45th president has referred to more than once. And space wars. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord had spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her waves do roar like great waters, and noise of their voice is uttered because the spoiler is come upon her. Even upon Babylon and her mighty men are taken. Every one of their bows are broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers, and her mighty men, and they shall sleep, a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. So there, those are the mighty men, the billionaires, and the captains and the rulers. That is what shall await, that, that is what awaits them, that they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burnt with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maseah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign, and the Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, when thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And that is a recurring theme in this chapter, and even in the previous one, that Babylon, current day Babylon, shall be rendered desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind the stone to it, and cast it in the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Dear brothers and sisters, if you haven't, if you, any of you haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you, I implore you that you invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. That, and I ask that the Holy Spirit comes upon you and that you may be convicted of your sins, that you may repent of your sins. For time is short, or shall we say we are on borrowed time? It is written in Romans chapter 10 verse 13, For whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please share this video if you feel led to. Subscribe and share. And one last thing, I noticed that every week subscribers are being unsubscribed from this channel by this platform which we're on. So if you see that you have become unsubscribed, please subscribe again. 
Have a blessed day, all of you. God bless you all.